just this once. And I... I want to... Subscribe. Cardi Kaizoku. The North American One Piece card game championship is not being live streamed. So we're going to do a speculative tournament to find out who will win. Here is the bracket for the top 8. We see the usual suspects here. Sakazuki, Eno, and Katakuri are all expected faces here, but we do see some surprising leaders up here as well. Nami made her way to top 8, perhaps riding on the success that Nami had at the EU Championships, where a Nami deck placed 7th overall. Will we see Nami make top 4 in NA? And the biggest shock of all is that there's a kid here in the top 8. I can't wait to see how he'll do. Alright, without further ado, let's hop into match number 1. We have Sakazuki versus Purple Luffy. Here we are starting off with Blue Black Sakazuki versus Purple Luffy. Uh, historically, Sakazuki does have the advantage against Purple Luffy, but we'll see how this game goes. Luffy starts out with a bunch of aggro, playing out ulti page 1. Going for the early game advantage here. Uh, Sakazuki having trouble answering the board. Yeah, Luffy just pounding him with, with Magellan after Magellan, playing queens to find more cards in their deck. Sakazuki having trouble finding answers, not enough removal. That can happen sometimes. Ooh, hits him with the 9 cost Kaido. Knocks him down really low. Oh, and Luffy takes game number 1. He was just able to develop too much before Sakazuki could set up. Because yeah, along with finding removal and cost reduction, he needs to Dawn to remove too. We'll see how game 2 goes. Okay, Luffy off to another early start. He ramps, draws a card. Ooh, Sakazuki does find an early uh, Houndblaze this time. Looks like everyone just setting up. Which I think would benef benefit Sakazuki more as a combo deck. Yep. Here he has uh, Luchi clearing the board. Yeah, Luffy just trying to get anything to stick at this point. But Sakazuki just keeps finding removal after removal. Pretty dominating performance by Sakazuki here. And yeah, we may just see this game go to Sakazuki. Yeah, Purple Luffy was just not able to develop anything. Yep, he had it. Yeah, Luffy just ran out of counter at the end. He does run a lot of non-counter cards. So it's hard to like defend yourself when you're that low. All right, it's going to go to the decisive game three for this first match of the North American Championship fi uh, Finals. This is not the finals, this is top eight. Okay. Ooh, this time Sakazuki with the early aggressive start, playing out brand news and Hinas, making them 6Ks and 7Ks to attack with. Let's see how Luffy handles this early aggression. Looks like he's opting not to ramp, preserving life, everyone just trading back and forth, setting up. Sakazuki plays a 7 cost Borsalino, but no no great targets to hit there. Oh, starting to get overwhelmed on the Luffy side. Here's the Hail Mary, 9 cost Kaido, trying to equalize. Clear one body on board and attack for 10. But Sakazuki is able to answer it with an Ice Age and a Borsalina to remove. Yeah, Luffy is just on fumes at this point. It is actually quite close actually. Oh, Luffy able to swarm the board now that Sakazuki's out of removal. He could take it, actually. Oh, uh, nope. Everyone trading back and forth. Looks like Sakazuki, yep, at the end was able to find the removal he needed. This might be over for Luffy, after all. Yep, Sakazuki takes the first match. It's to be expected. Whew, what an exciting first match of the top 8 in this championship finals. There were a lot of back and forths, but it went to the historically favorite Sakazuki in this matchup. Now let's take a look at the bracket. So Sakazuki will be the first leader to make it into the semifinals. We have confirmation from the ground team that the next match is ready to get underway. Let's take a look at match number two between Zoro and Enel. Right, we have our second match of the top eight, Enel versus Zoro. Uh, Enel does have a commanding advantage over Zoro. I think Zoro's win rate against Enel is pretty abysmal, so kind of unfortunate for him to face off against Enel on the first match of the top 8. But we see here Zoro playing very aggressively, 
Searcher into Searcher, buffing them to attack, taking Enel's life, but Enel usually takes life early anyway, so nothing unexpected. It's all about how Enel can preserve himself at one life. Ooh, Zoro not letting up though, burning every counter in their hand. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter if you can have super armor at the end if you just run out of cards to defend yourself with. Yeah, here's where it matters. He's at one health. Ooh, just not enough. Yeah, th there's like a certain amount of luck involved too on your triggers. Betch triggers, Sanji triggers to keep you alive, and you need to find your Yamato's in hand at the right time too. Zoro just can sometimes rush you down before you can find answers. We'll see how game two goes. Alright, Zoro starting up strong again. A lot of aggro. Ooh, but Enel actually uh, trying to go for the early game this time, playing Ohm into Holy to attack back into the weenies. Quite even so far. Yeah, we're seeing Enel play more aggressively this time, changing up his playstyle. Not going for like the stall kind of playstyle, because he can just accidentally die out of nowhere against Zoro. Quite even so far. And if it does get to the late game, Enel should have the advantage if they're both low. Ooh, Enel might have this one. Yeah, looks like it's going to be Enel's game here. Ooh, but Zoro finds Dedan into Nami into Rush Luffy. Can't block. Zoro takes the set against Enel. Wow. His hardest matchup out of the way already. A surprise victory from quite a heavily unfavored matchup for Zoro. Quite possibly the biggest upset of the entire tournament. Let's take a look at the updated bracket. So Zoro will be making his way into the semifinals to go against Sakazuki. Zoro does pretty well into Sakazuki. With Zoro's hardest matchup out of the way, we very well may see him take this entire tournament. But it looks like match number 3 is ready to start, so let's tune in to Whitebeard versus Nami. We have Nami versus Whitebeard. Quite the um, un uncommon matchup here. Well, uh, we might need to get a judge on that. That it seemed like the Whitebeard started while Nami was still mulliganing. I don't know, we'll have to see it in the playback, but that does mean that Nami has a harder time milling herself. Yeah, Whitebeard just putting out 6k vanilla after 6k vanilla. Playing out for Ace, and oh, it looks like he's stalling? But yeah, I don't know, Nami just has to mill herself to win. She doesn't have to attack life really. Yeah, she just needs to focus on her defense and then just outlive all of Whitebeard's offense and then she should have the game. Oh, but it looks like Whitebeard just has too much offense here. Yeah, just too much rush with the 5-class uh, Luffy's and 7-class Aces. Nami might have to try to change up her strategy here. Focus more on removing the body. Oh! Hey, we gotta get a judge on this guy. Uh, He's doing a lot of fishy maneuvers. Yeah, and I, I wish I knew more about Nami so that I could commentate what her cards do, but um, she mills and she defends, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Oh, but Nami going on more of the offensive this time, clearing board, making sure that she can't die to the aggression from Whitebeard so that she can safely mill herself. But Whitebeard finding rush card after rush card. Oh, he drops a 9 beard. But that's fine. Nami doesn't really care about the uh, elevated stat line afterwards. Oh, but then back to back 9 beard brings Nami down pretty low. Does Nami have enough defense to stall this out? It is getting quite close. Oh, but Nami in the end loses. Just too much aggression from White Beard. But we, we might need to get a judge on this guy. I don't know. He seemed. Like he was doing some fishy things at the beginning of each match. Darn, looks like Nami can't quite crack top 4, but top 8 is still nothing to scoff at. It's the only deck on this bracket to cost under $100 too. This deck should give hope to those who find the staples in Sakazuki and Yellow to be just too expensive to buy. 
And there seems to be some fishy business going on with that Whitebeard, uh, but the judges have yet to call anything. So Whitebeard does advance to the semifinals. And I'm getting word that match number four is ripped and ready to roll. So let's transition over to Katakuri versus Kid. We have Kid versus Katakuri, the matchup that I am the most interested in. Let's see what kind of kid this is. Katakuri with the basic curve, strong but reliable. We haven't seen Kid do anything yet though, so we're not sure what kind of deck he is. But he is just getting clobbered by triggers from Katakuri. Petal Spettle Trigger, Cracker Trigger, just hit every trigger in the deck. Oh, oh it looks like this is a D-Gen Kid. A D-Gen Kid made it to the top 8. But unfortunately I know how this matchup is going to go. Uh, this yellow matchup is kind of impossible for D-Gen Kid. There is a version of Kid that I've been testing that does pretty good into yellow, but I'm still going to keep it a secret until I can use it in an event. And then after that I'll release it to the public I guess. But yeah, this matchup is going the way we expect. Kid just can't handle all the uh, different triggers that come out of Katakuri and then his ability to heal, making double attacking kind of hard to finish off the opponent if he can just keep healing the life back. And it looks like it's going to be over soon. Yep. Just couldn't deal with uh, all the heals. Moving on to game two. Let's see if Kid can maybe get some luck in triggers from Katakuri. Maybe he doesn't get too many good triggers. He has this so that he can stand a chance at like actually finishing him off. Ooh, but Katakuri starting off with the Gedatsu. Clearing Kid's board of blockers. Yep. Putting cards on the bottom of his life. Looks like he found some good triggers. We can expect those to come out. Ooh, seven cost Big Mom. Kid decides to take? What is he doing? Oh, we might see a 10 cost Big Mom here. Yep, 10 cost Big Mom. Katakuri heals one life, Kid takes one life, and yeah, it just seems kind of hopeless at this point. He can double attack all he wants, but I think it's going to be over here soon. Oh, he does land a 10 cost Doflamingo. Let's see if that makes a difference, though. They kind of equalize it a bit, but nope, looks like Amaru to finish the game. And Katakuri takes it against Kid. Kid drops out. Doesn't make it higher than top 8. But still glad to see him here. The dark horse of the tournament. Unfortunately, Dijan Kid had to run into his worst matchup on the first round. But it's still quite amazing that Kid made it all the way to top 8. But of course, Katakuri is one of the most favorite decks in the entire meta. And he'll round out our pairings for the semifinals. Before we move on to the semi-final matches though, here is a quick word from our sponsors. Alright, the semi-finals of the North American One Piece Card Game Championship is ready to get underway. As a reminder, here is the bracket. Our first match will be Sakazuki vs Zoro. I am quite excited for this one, so let's jump right into the match. Alright, first match of the semifinals, Zoro versus Blue Black Sakazuki. Now I do believe Red Zoro does have the advantage in this matchup. Especially the um, Straw Hat version, the more aggressive version, which is what the Zoro is running. It all depends on how many Luchis that the Sakazuki can find to mitigate the early aggression from Zoro. But yeah, it looks like Zoro got the perfect curve into the perfect searchers. Really not letting up on the aggro here. Swinging for 7k over and over. Katakuri cycling to find answers, but just getting 2k counters. Oh. At least got one Helm Blaze. He's gonna need. Yep, he landed a Luchi. Okay, yeah. Equalized the board a bit, but he is quite low on life now. Ooh. Sakazuki made a pretty big comeback, but he's susceptible to rush cards at this point since he's so low on life. Uh, he just couldn't muster up enough counter in time. Zoro takes game one. Yeah, with Enel out of the way, Enel being Zoro's like biggest gatekeeper, we actually could see Zoro win this whole thing. Especially if he beats Sakazuki. Probably the next hardest matchup for him. Ooh, do so we do see Sakazuki actually get early answers this time around. 
yeah, if you can just handle Zoro's board early on, it's hard for him to like keep up the aggression in the late game. Uh, but yeah, just like that, he just needs to find like a Curly Dodon into a Nami and he's back in. Ooh, we see Rush Luffy out, but oh! How is Takazuki able to answer it with a 7 cost Borsalino? Ooh, even finishes the game off with a brand new attack. Alright, 1-1. One, one. Game 3s are always fun to see. Alright, let's see who makes it to the finals between Zoro and Sakazuki. Yeah, even though Zoro's favorite into Sakazuki, Sakazuki is still nothing to be scoffed at. He is a top meta deck, best deck in the format, most would say. It just depends on the luck, a little bit of luck, depending on if Sakazuki can find answers. But quite the even game so far. Sakazuki being able to answer a lot of Zoro's early bodies and also attack back quite aggressively. It might come down to a race in who can finish each other off first. Oh, and Sakazuki takes it. Yeah, Zoro didn't leave any down up for Radical Beams, hoping they could race, but then Sakazuki was able to find out more damage. You know, I thought Zoro had it there for a second, but it looks like Sakazuki was able to handle the aggression and clutched another win. So Sakazuki does make it to the final round, being our first finalist. That leaves our remaining semi-final match between Whitebeard and Katakuri, and we're into the game. Alright, we have Katakuri versus Whitebeard, the other semi-final match. I'm gonna keep an eye on this Whitebeard. Oh, yeah, there we need to get a judge on this guy. He, he starts the game before the opponent's even done, like, mulliganing. The judges haven't done anything about this guy yet. Looks like uh, he had a pretty strong start into Katakuri back in the OP04 days where Whitebeard did do pretty good into Katakuri. Katakuri did get some new tools though in OP05 that might help him in this matchup. Yeah, it's not as one-sided as before, but it does look like Whitebeard has the uh, advantage here. Uh, yeah, it was just too much for Katakuri to handle. But also, that advantage from the beginning does play a big factor into it. I, I don't know how this guy has not been warned about it yet or anything, or how he's getting away with it. Yeah, they, he's doing it again. Uh, hey, Judge, can, can you look into this guy? Alright, looks like they're gonna talk to him after the match. Yeah, this is looking like a slaughter. Rush card after rush card, 9 cost white beard even. He yeah, can't even drop a 10 cost big mom safely because he'll just die if he does. What can he do at this point? Uh, yeah, just stall with Sanji's. I guess that's all you can do. Ooh, and white beard takes it. But we're gonna see who gets the match here. Hey, hey Judge, hey, he's ready. That shady Whitebeard won, but the bracket has yet to be updated. Uh, looks like the judges have pulled the Whitebeard aside and are talking to him. Can we get an update? Okay, I'm getting word that the Whitebeard player has actually been DQ'd. Yeah, I guess there was just too much evidence mounting against him. It seems like there's quite a lot of cheating in this card game. The judges have ruled that the Katakuri moves on to the finals though. Uh, what a crazy turn of events. There's nothing quite like some card game drama at the North American One Piece Card Game Championship. So that means our final matchup is between Sakazuki and Katakuri. No one could have seen this coming. The final duel will be a best 2 out of 3 match. It's the Clash of the Titans, the two head honchos of the meta. They're going to duke it out here at the North American One Piece Card Game Championship Finals. So let's get right into the game. What a crazy turn of events. Uh, looks like Sakazuki versus Katakuri in the end. Thought it was going to be Sakazuki versus Whitebeard, but yeah, scummy players like that should be dealt with. But yeah, this is the classic Katakuri versus Sakazuki match where I, we, I do think Katakuri does have the advantage historically. But quite the even match so far. 
Okay, Katakuri's been developing bodies, but Sakazuki's been able to answer. But oh, seven cost Big Mom. Really put a big chunk into Sakazuki there. And then just playing more mid-game bodies here. Just trying to go for game, get around Sakazuki's blockers. And yep, Katakuri was able to aggro down with some lucky cracker triggers. Looks like potentially the aggressive version of Katakuri does pretty good into Sakazuki. Better than the uh, stall one. Because the stall one just gives Sakazuki time to find answers. And we start off with another Petal's Petal trigger. Swing for 7, check life. Katakuri is looking for answers still though. Oh, he combos. Get Luchi off, clears board. Nice. Let's just hope he doesn't get too many good triggers. Oh, he just got a Cracker trigger. Into 8 cost Katakuri. Ooh, but then gets answered. Oh, nope. He miscounted, didn't have enough cost reduction there. Katakuri does find another 7 cost Big Mom. It's all on if Sakazuki can stall out the big attacks and then poke, suck, poke Katakuri enough to kill him. Looks like Sakazuki might have it. He's getting pretty close, just need one more attack in. Oh, but Katakuri had just enough counter to stop that last hit. And won on the clap back there. Alright, uh, that was the decisive game one. So we'll have to go to game two here. Alright, game two. Sakazuki versus Katakuri in the finals. Oh, this deck looks a little different than the one he ran last game. And hey, we're gonna need a judge to check on this. Yeah, I, did, I didn't recall seeing Tenkos Kuzan or Ice Age the entire day. Watching him play. Might have, uh, might have to do a deck check here. Some fishy things going on in the finals here. Yeah, there's the ten cost Kuzan again. It could just be that he never drew into it, but what are the chances of that, right? That he'd have all the perfect answers to Katakuri in this game? Yeah, he's running more Ice Ages and Kuzans than he did last time. Able to answer everything that Katakuri's been putting out. Katakuri having trouble keeping anything on board. And that game goes to Sakazuki, actually. But we're gonna get a judge on this. Oh, I can't believe they let them go to a game 3. But that's what the judges decided, so this game will decide it all. It will decide who is gonna be the winner of the North America Championships. We do see Katakuri off to a strong start here. Ooh, punishing the, the Sakazuki. Sakazuki needs to block her up at this point, find Rebecca's, find Borsolino's. But yeah, Katakuri just being able to swing over them. Could finish it here with an Amaru. Oh, but yeah, Katakuri is not low enough to Amaru, so maybe a Thunderbolt trigger? He did put a life card on top, and yeah, it was a Thunderbolt trigger that finished off, Katakuri, uh, finished off Sakazuki. Quite the decisive match there. Katakuri absolutely dominating over Sakazuki. Alright, if Katakuri wins this one, then he'll take the whole tournament. But Sakazuki not gonna go down without a fight. Goes for a more uh, aggro start. Drops a Sabo. Draws two, discards two. Looking for answers here. Kind of whiff though. But Katakuri playing the perfect curve here. Ooh, Sakazuki finally hits a removal spell here. Quite even, back and forth. Oh, but Katakuri getting some good triggers here. Ooh, Sanji trigger, Satori trigger. It might be over. I don't think Sakazuki can defend against all of this. And it is over brutalized. So there we have it. 
Last match of the tournament. And there you have it. Katakuri is our North American One Piece card game champion. Yellow cards are going to skyrocket in price again, and Katakuri will still be good in OP06. That wraps up my speculative North American One Piece card game championship top 8. If I got any of this correct, you have to subscribe. Okay, bye. Cardi Kaizoku.